I'm doing this with my own library, so I figured I'd just make a little tip here to throw this out there, especially if you're confused by the way that Final Cut Pro libraries work. You'll, you might have even more questions about this incompatibility media thing that's been coming up. So let me just explain what I do, my process for it. Again, this is not necessarily the best way to do it. It's certainly not the only way you can go about it. But this is personally what I do. And let me explain my setup that I have here. So I've opened up a Finder window, which you can just click on the Finder on the dock and do Shift-Command-C to go to your computer. You'll notice at the top center here, just says Jared's iMac, because this is my iMac. And currently connected to my iMac, I have a Time Machine external drive that's making a backup of everything that's connected to my computer, both my external storage and my Macintosh HD uh, storage here. But then I have this MyBook drive here, and this MyBook drive is an archive drive that I have. If I double click on this drive, what you'll see is there's just one folder. And if I double click on the projects folder to open it, you'll see I have a series of folders each by year. And essentially what I do for my own organizational purposes is I put all my projects into a folder for that year when the project was either being worked on or created just to keep myself organized. And then I, so far, I've archived everything that's 2012 and back. These are just stored on external drives that can be separate from my primary working storage drives. I want to make sure that the libraries, the Final Cut Pro libraries that are stored in this archive drive are going to be compatible going forward. So I want to upgrade those libraries to the current version of Final Cut Pro and I want to use that new feature to check for compatible media. If there's anything that's incompatible, it'll then let me know, hey, you need to convert these to make them compatible media. So how do I go about doing this to be most efficient? Well, if I went into each of these folders, you would see in some cases hundreds of various projects and other things inside of each of these, and that can be a pain to search for. So what I do, I'm going to hit the little back arrow at the top left here, actually just inside of my hard drive, I go in and I do Command F to do a search. So Command F for find. And what comes up here is the search, right? If you're used to the Mac and the Finder, this is just a generic search. But I do a couple things to modify it. First, I'm going to click on My Book A because I only want to search for projects in the My Book. And then I'm going to search for, instead of kind is any, I'm going to change it to kind is other because Final Cut Pro library is not an option there. I'll choose other, and then I can type in Final Cut Pro. Let me give you just stop at L, and I'll find it. And notice now, I see a list of 10 Final Cut Pro libraries in this backup drive. Final Cut Pro 10 was released in mid-2011, so it makes sense that there's not too many libraries in this archive, but I can see the 10 listed here. If you're working with your current projects, you might have many, many, many more of these projects. So what do you need to do? Well, if you have a library here, what you're gonna wanna do is double click on the library to open it. So in this case, I'll click on this music video library. It's gonna open it up into Final Cut. And because I have not opened this in a while, it says, hey, this library, it needs to be updated to work with this version, which is what I expected. I haven't opened this in a while, so it was used on an older version, so we're going to want to update it. And again, with this, I preface that you should have either Time Machine or another backup of these libraries, because when you're doing an update like this, it's possible for something to go wrong and corrupt the library or, or something else where you'll want to use that backup as the easy way to get back. So before you click Update, make sure you have that backup. In this case, I know I have a backup of these, so I'm gonna click on Update. Final Cut goes and processes the library. It does let you know there that it is making a backup, so there are ways to get around, but you should have a dedicated backup method. So here I am in the music video library. It's now been updated to work with the current version of Final Cut. So now I wanna to check to see if there is any incompatible media in this library. I'm pretty sure there's not, but I'm gonna check anyway. So I'm going to click on the name of the library, which in this case is Music Video. I'm then going to go up to File, 
and there's an option here that says check media for compatibility. If you don't see this option, you're either working on an older version of Final Cut that doesn't have this feature, or you might be on a newer version of Final Cut where they might have gotten rid of this feature. So this version that I'm currently on is 10.4.6. So that's the version I'm working on. So I get this option, so I'm gonna click on check media for compatibility. It goes through and scans it, in this case almost instantly, which I really like, and it lets me know no media compatibility issues were detected in this library. So I could click on learn more and you can do this as well if you wanna dig into the articles. They explain this in really great detail as far as what formats are not going to be compatible and some other info. But in this case, that's great. That's exactly what I wanted to see. So I'm gonna click on okay. I'm gonna right click on my music video library and I'm gonna say close that library. I'm gonna use command tab on the keyboard to switch back to my search. And now I know I've done the music video library. You'll notice over on the right, I can tell exactly which ones I've done because I've modified them today, right? So I can see I skipped the library here, so I'm gonna double click on it to open it. I'm gonna update the library. Which again, the update can take some time depending on how much media is there and also what versions you're switching between. So don't hesitate to go get a drink maybe, come back, get a snack, do something. So here I am in the library, I've opened it, it's been updated, so I'm gonna click on the library name in the browser, go up to file and say check media for compatibility. You'll notice this one I did not get a pop-up right away, so we'll just wait and see if we get one. So the only thing about this feature that I, I mean there's a couple things, but the main thing I don't like about this feature is at this point I have no indication that it's checking the media for compatibility, so I'm not 100% sure if it's gone through and actually uh, checked it or not. So if you run into this, this can be something where maybe it's something with these missing files that it's not being able to check, check it. I'm not 100% sure why that happens, and it looks like all of these files are missing in my case. So that might be the case. If there's no media, we might not be getting a an option for that to check. So again, I've just verified, I've selected the library, gone up to file, check media for compatibility. I don't see any pop-up or anything coming up. And also all of my clips appear to be offline in this library. So that might be why I'm not getting that message. But I'm very confident that I went through the steps correctly to do that check. I can also see really, I mean, it looks like all of these are offline, which means there's no media to actually check. So that's fine, just could be a, a an oversight on my part for that library. So it might be something where if you run into that, you'll wanna go in and investigate why those clips aren't there. Maybe your media is missing or in another folder. That might be something to consider with that project. Again, these for me are uh, archived projects. They're archived libraries, so I might not even need the media from this one. So I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna use Command Tab again to switch back to the Finder. I can see I've gone through the first one, so now I'm going to open up the next library. Again, same, same steps as before, pretty straightforward. I'm just doing a couple of these so you can get an idea of what this process looks like, and we'll see if there's any other changes. I don't believe I have any media that would be considered uh, one of those formats, but we'll see if we run into that on any of these. I'm going to select my library, go up to File, and do the Check Media for Compatibility. No media was detected with issues, so that's great. Close the library, command tab, go into my next library, update it for the current version. And you can see how quickly this is going to find all these libraries and update everything on a single drive. So it's not something that's gonna take a tremendous amount of time, so I wouldn't be afraid to go through and do this process. Looks good, we'll close the library, do command tab, got the next, library, I'm updating it. And the, I mean, really the greatest thing about this, sure you're checking for the compatibility of the media, but this lets you update everything, all of those old libraries, and going forward, it'll definitely help out to make sure and verify you'll have access to everything. And I got two more libraries on this, so let's just do these libraries. And my understanding, if you do run into a library that does have 
compatibility issues, you'll actually get a, a message that shows up that allows you to go through and convert those files. So I believe that's what shows up based on articles and other sites that I've seen. I have not run into it on any of my libraries yet, which is great. So here in the wedding, it looks like we're not getting that message that verifies it. There are some background tasks. Let's see. Looks like it's going through just rendering my timeline. So it doesn't look like it's actually checking anything. But again, let's select the library. Let's go up to File and do Check Media from Compatibility. Notice I don't get that pop-up. A little concerning. I'll select the event, go up to File, Check Media from Compatibility. Doesn't look like that does it either. Let me try selecting an individual clip here and going up and checking media for compatibility. Doesn't look like it does that either. Now, this very well could be caused because I have some offline media here. So I'm gonna go through and remove all of these missing files from this library. Okay, so I found and was able to remove the missing file. So now I've selected the library, I'm going up to File and saying Check Media for Compatibility. And yeah, there we go. This time I do get the little pop-up message. So it appears, at least in this little test that you saw, that you won't get a check if media is offline, which kind of makes sense. I wish that Apple included a some kind of a pop-up to let us know that, but it looks like it's not that Final Cut is not checking or verifying that your media is going to be compatible unless those clips are connected. So that's an important thing to point out there. But I've done it with this library, I've updated it, so I now can close that one. I'll do Command Tab again. It looks like I have one more library here to update and check. So I'm going to have that go through and update. Uh, while this one's going, I want to mention one other thing that these are all Final Cut libraries that are libraries, meaning they're not the older version of Final Cut Pro 10 that were events and projects before a library was created. So if you do have much older events and projects, like the older version of Final Cut, if you do have those, you'll want to get those updated to the library format first and then go through this check. So this one's opened, it's updated. Now I'm gonna check for media compatibility. Awesome, no issues in this one. So I'm gonna say, okay, that looks good. And let's close out this library. Uh, I'm gonna take a quick break here and come back with a library. I'm gonna find an incompatible clip so you can see what those steps look like because I'm curious too what it looks like. It seems like it's very easy to do the uh, conversion. So let's do that next after this break. All right, took me a few minutes because I don't have any incompatible media, at least that I can find. So I created a clip using MPEG Stream Clip. I just converted this one clip into an H.261 formatted clip, so it's not going to be compatible. And when I tried to import that clip into Final Cut Pro 10, I got this message that lets me know, hey, this media is not going to be compatible, so I could convert it right now which is kind of cool, right? If it detects on import that you're importing some old media, you'll then get that option to convert it. I'm going to skip that step right now and just import it normally, just so we can do the conversion. So uh, here's that clip, looks like it's been imported. It's an awful clip because of how I converted it there, but that's okay. But if I click on this library, you'll notice I do have a little alert symbol on that library. And I don't see anything inside of the inspector here to indicate what that alert is for. Let's see if I hover over it. I don't think, yeah, the tool tip, nothing gives me an, an indication right now why that is. But if I go up to the file menu, I can hit this check media for compatibility. And notice now it did find that I have a clip that's not going to be compatible. So if you find this, you might find you have a project or a library that has hundreds of clips that need to be converted, but luckily you can just go here and hit the convert button. And in our background tasks window, it went almost immediately, but it, because it was only one really short clip, but it has now gone through and converted that clip for me. If I select the library here, notice there's no little symbol. If I go up to file and check media for compatibility, everything looks good now. 
And I'm curious too, if I right click on it and say reveal in Finder, bring up a Finder window here, and here is that converted clip. Let's open that file and do Command I, and I can see here it has been converted, and it's been converted using Apple ProRes 422 with the size of that video. Let me compare it to the original file. Open up this one, do Command I. Oh, we already have the inspector, so it's there. So let's do Command I. Let's see if I can get. It. Yeah, I can't get two. That's okay. So notice converted clip is format ProRes 422. Original clip format is H264. That's interesting because it's, oh, it is saying it's converted here. So it looks like QuickTime's doing it on the fly and converting it. But the original was an H261. That's what I used to make that file to make it incompatible. So when you use Final Cut or Compressor or iMovie, any of these, when you use Final Cut, though, to convert it, it's converting it to a ProRes file, it looks like, at least in my case here. So um, that's the conversion process. Again, you don't have to be worried about this, but it's something I would recommend going through and checking all your old libraries. Even if you have hundreds of them, this process is going to be fairly quick. I mean, it, it may take a couple hours or even a couple days to go back through all of your libraries. However, that time is going to be really well spent. You'll be able to save so much time in the future because you won't have to worry about going back to an older version of Final Cut or Mac OS to upgrade things. I think you'll be in a much better state. So do this now. You'll save yourself some headaches in the future. And if you do run into any issues with this process or other questions, don't hesitate. You can send an email to finalcutprohelp at me.com or leave a comment below. I'm always interested in seeing how things are working out, especially with a new feature like this.